a, a 2D side scrolling play like think like Contra. Okay. But it looks like the nineteen thirties Fleischer like Betty Boop cartoons. The early, yeah. early Mickey okay. Mouse. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like pr- mm-hmm. yeah. It, but but the gameplay is like Contra with the shooting and the platforming, but it looks like that. Interesting. Uh, it's pretty amazing. But um some website, the only person they had uh, so the game's out now, but when it was a demo just for industry insiders at some convention in Germany, the only guy they had there is apparently the worst person on the planet at platformers, and they released his his bumbling attempts on the internet, and it is depressingly terrible. Like, it takes him five minutes to beat the tutorial because he can't figure out jump dash, and the thing says jump and then dash, and he consists to not do that for like four minutes against the side of a platform. And, like, he keeps dying to the first level because it's Contra. Just go right. Nothing's to your left. But he keeps, like, going left and right randomly and dying to everything. And he has no learning ability because he gets hit by the first enemy in the level literally every single time he starts the level over. It's a glorious train wreck. I can't pop out the chat. Take that, Dechert. Thank you. Thank you, Twitch Beta, for... uh... Making it so I can't pop out the chat. <laughs> Twitch is beta. They're they have like some kind of new streaming thing for for beta, and uh, yeah, I uh, I can't. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to fix this. Drag the entire window over here. Yeah, take that window. We don't need to be able to see the chat. They never say anything useful anyway. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's it's great. Watching pe- uh, the funny thing is when you know most reviewers aren't actually you know full on game players. You know they don't actually play the games that much, or they or they're they're reviewing games. What what do you what what? Keep going. I'll make the gamer jo- gate jokes later. Oh okay. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> but I mean they they don't. Uh, or they or they're reviewing games that don't match their style, like you know, like that was their like claim you... on this guy. They're like, he's actually good at other games, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what game style doesn't mean you're okay at platformers. Well, like, I guess if only you play real time, like turn based strategy if, games. If all you play is FIFA and Madden, the, like sports games. If you Madden. play FIFA and Madden, you should be able to handle a jump dash. No, well, not even jump dash. The fact that he got hit by the first enemy on that plat- on that level every single time means that he has no cognitive learning process, which He's any from game Florida? requires. Hmm? He's from Florida, possibly, but like, it, bah. It's like if you play FIFA and just try to run up the middle every time, and you're like, I just get sacked every time, and then you learn, don't do that. Dang. Didn't Wait, that work? FIFA, th- that's, no sack, I'm thinking of know? Madden. Madden. <laughs> My brain went to Madden. There's say. no crying in baseball. <laughs> that worked in earlier Madden game, so. Remember, la- pass interference was only called if you missed. The last ma- Really? Yeah, that was like Madden 96 oh. or 97. You only got flagged for pass interference if you didn't catch the ball as the defender. Wait. Wait. So it was great. So you just tackled the guy and then catch the ball, and you had to run in it. It was a great bug. When the Dreamcast was out, me and two, my two roommates, I'm sorry, my two roommates and I would play um, <clears throat> an NHL game on the Dreamcast, and we're playing a three-player, and apparently the Dreamcast didn't want any of you to not get to play the game, because that would be sad if you didn't get to play your game. So ahead of its time. So you could not get a third penalty. You, you could get two people in the box, and then you, it was no holds barred. So we would just, we would roll the goalie like we're rolling a drunk outside a bar. We would just beat the shit out of that guy while the third guy just ducked the puck in there. We would win games like 100 to nothing. <laughs> Oh, so you're the, you're the players that just rammed your players into the goalie. We'd get two penalties, and then we would just check the shit out of the goalie because they wouldn't call a penalty anymore as long as there was somebody in the box. It was great. Welcome to episode two one. Five. You don't know the number either. <laughs> I know it. It's it's the wrong one on the sheet there though, or on the uh, well, you can on the stream, week. which I'll fix in a moment. But it's episode two one five of the Crippled System podcast. My name is Andy, and I play. Oh right, because I missed the last one. Yeah, I was like, it's two one four because two one three was last, but my brain doesn't. You think... missed the last two. Last was two it? was it two? Just one. Maybe it was two. I don't know. I think just one. No, I think it was just the last one because I was on two weeks ago, I thought. Yeah. Because it was you, me, Quimby, David. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. That was the yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. 
That was, yeah. Uh, my name is Andy, and I play butchers and a lot of Guild Ball stuff. I own seven out of 11 guilds for Guild Ball. I started playing the game less than a month and a half ago. You're going to burn out so hard. No, I'm no. not good. And, and I play Cater. My name is Nathan, and I play Final Fantasy IX. Although I fucked up in Mognet somewhere, because I have like three letters to deliver, so I can't pick up any more, because you can't carry more than three. And one of the letters needs to be delivered. I just, I think I fucked up Mognet. I mean, it's a pointless side quest that doesn't give you anything. And so gonna, you have to restart the game. Well, I have to play the game a second time anyway, because Steiner's Ultimate Weapon, you can only get on a speed run. And I wasn't going to do a fucking speed run the first time through. Although now I'm going to have to reset to do a speed run, but also to do a very time-intensive completionist side quest. So maybe I have to play it twice more. Wah, wah. And I'm Dan. I play Kirks. Because I'm a bad person, apparently. I'm trying to figure out the Twitch new beta. Take that, Be Twitch. annoying to me. Boop, boop, boop. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Announcements? No, wait, not announcements yet. Well, kind of announcements. It's October. I want to. I'm doing a, a soapbox thing real quick. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. All right, go. Cool. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of old news, but I have a follow-up specific old news. So the old news is fuck the Susan G. Komen Foundation. It's October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's all well and good. Breast cancer is a terrible thing. We should all worry about it, which is why you shouldn't give your money to the Susan G. Komen Foundation because according to their own numbers, they give 14% of the money they get in goes towards breast cancer research. That's a pretty shitty number. And actively fight everybody who has... That's the other 86%. Yeah. Is suing you. If, you're, if your Girl Scout troop wants to do a fundraiser car wash and they say car wash for the cure, you get, fire, you get sued by the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Uh, but there is a different found uh, the Breast Cancer Research Association. Or if I, yeah, so. Breast Cancer Research Association. They give ninety percent of the money they raise towards breast cancer research. So if you do want to take advantage of the October thing and you want to do breast cancer support, which I fully encourage you to do so, uh, do that to them instead of Susan G. Komen, because Susan G. Komen is a terrible pile of garbage, and they burn your money suing Girl Scouts. And, and anybody else who, who basically wants to help further the cause that they're actually, quote unquote, trying to try to do. Correct. They also spend the money on, like, you know, hookers and blow. Hookers and blow. Well, and, and uh, whatever. Point is, fuck them. But, you know, Here's breast a better cancer charity. research. Yes. yes. A better. It's a, it's, this is my eat this, not that, but for donations instead of eating. Donate here, not there. Did you fix chat yet? No. I can't yell at breast cancer more. There's only so much I can do, Andy. Announcements. Right. Yeah, announcements. Yeah, Fine. Yeah. Dan, your turn. Okay. I'll be the one who'll have to announce chats and that, and I apologize. We, we normally actively watch all the chat that's on, that like comes speak up. Speak for yourself. Well, I said we normally. It's the royal we. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry. I... Uh, I guess I'm, I'm the... I'll just pull it up on my iPad. It'll yeah, be fine. I'll pull it up on my phone. But Dan has to talk... About, Dan has an announcement on behalf of the um, America's Team Championship Committee. Yep. ATC registration is open for both the team tournament and now uh, we have added a Solo Masters. Um, solo Masters will run Saturday and Sunday as well. It'll be a five-round event, so capped at 32 players. Um, cost is $75? Yep, it's the same per person as yep. the team event. And We we'll are still working on dropping that price, so in theory, you could get... It could be cheaper, but for now, that is the maximum possible it could cost, and so that's what we're going for. But So from a scheduling perspective, um, well, first of all, uh, the prize is the same as it was last year. The winning person for the Solo Masters, in addition to the winning team from the team event, will be offered Amer uh, slots on one of the USA WTC teams, assuming you are American. But And if uh, you're not American, it's hilarious to deny that position to somebody who is. Yep. Uh, or, yeah. Yep. Never mind, I'm not going to bring it up. Yep. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, whatever. That, if, if somebody doesn't want to take advantage of the prize, that's their own choice. But I'm just saying, like, a Venezuelan coming up here, winning the solo masters and just meat spitting in the face of everybody else would be hilarious. That would be illegal. I don't think you can really... I mean, it is Milwaukee. But anyways... 
Um, so one thing we are doing dif different this year from a scheduling perspective, the Solo Masters is going to start one round later than the team event. If teams do very poorly... Or do well, it's their choice. Yeah. They, you can 1-0. That's <laughs> true. Or if you're Ethan and you wish to play round one of the team event and then your entire team wants to drop, you can do so. And then people... Individual players, if they so choose, can join the solo masters. There is a small rescheduling fee that we're applying to that. It's only ten bucks, so per it's person. not a big deal. Yeah, but oh, yeah, yeah, per person. Yep. Um, but that is an option. Uh, we're using that also to make sure that we give the solo masters the best possible chance to get a nice, robust player base. So take advantage well, it's of it. Just uh, a lot of people requested that last year. Um, to, to have it be after and we weren't sure about that but it's nice because now you can go with your team you can try to win as a team and if you guys scrub out round one but you really have your hopes and dreams set on getting a slot on the american world team championship team you can then individually still attempt to go for the gold so you're not mm -hmm. choosing one or the other mm -hmm. um and this year is a really good year to be doing this because uh oops i thought i muted this i'm getting on our twitch thing um, I'll have it up here in a minute. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, very uh, publicly is not the word I'm looking for. Notably, like uh, we've had several retirements. Yeah, but what's the word I'm looking for? We're a lot of things very big and noticeable. Whatever. The point is, lots of people with the leaving of the war machine after America did not win the WTC. So the your country needs new blood, next generation. You can be Picard. Kirk is gone. You can be Picard. And who doesn't want to be Picard? Or Riker. <gasps> or Guinan. Uh, not Tasha Yar. Pow! Nobody wants to be Tasha Yar. What? Tasha Yar didn't want to be Tasha Yar. That's why no. she quit the show. <laughs> so, interesting story. As long as, as you don't a, want to be Wesley. I had a good friend that uh, never saw the Next Generation series. And I ended up getting him to watch uh, Encounter at Farpoint. And then immediately after that... Watch all good things. Watch, and then immediately watch the after bookings. that, watch the final episode of uh, Voyager. No. And then after that, watch the episode of Voyager where they turn into lizards. <clears throat> no. But, I mean, it was, it was a neat... Because it, it's... A counter at Farpoint and all good things are actually... It's a two-parter that works fairly well if you watch them together. Um, it's... It was kind of funny. He he was also curious why Tasha was not in all the things. <laughs> she got eaten by an oil monster and then turned into an alternate dimension Romulan sister or something. Uh, uh. All right, I think I got the chat running. Yep. So I do love how just Star Trek Discovery being locked behind a horrible paywall has pushed all four. Is it four or is it five? Original, Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise. All five other ones that are on Netflix up on their <coughs> trending now again. Well, how, uh, I, everybody and their mother wants their own streaming service now. You know, because Disney's going to do one as well, which is dumb. Yep. The only, reason, the only way I'll be happy with the Disney streaming service is if they get rid of the fucking vault. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, if they put the their whole back catalog on there everything. as a parent, that'll be amazing. Every single movie, every freaking TV show. Yeah, I would pay for. Uh, yeah, I would pay for access for. I mean, the TV shows I'm not <sighs> even as worried about. But if they I'm make not it either, but I'm if they could make it so all the Disney movies were available for streaming, yeah, I would pay five bucks a month for that. I have a child. That would be amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's a guarantee that you don't have to. Make sure that they didn't accidentally switch a channel or something like that. Mm. Well, not only that, I don't want to spend four hundred dollars building up that catalog in a medium that's going to wear. I'm going to be replaced with the next special edition that we found five more minutes of director's commentary from someone who's been dead. Sure, but you won't. Like the, the thing is, I I don't mind. I mean, that is a very valid point. But I was always furious at the vault because of the uh, it's, it's artificial scarcity. <laughs> And it's deja vu here, so we'll only go down the, we'll only go down this topic slightly. But hey, here's Beauty and the Beast. You can buy it for for six months. There it is. There it is. Up, oh, gone for a decade. What's that? You have a kid next year, and you raising them, and you like Beauty and the Beast, and you want your kid to watch you. Fuck, fuck you. Em. Fuck you. No Beauty and the Beast for you, because Disney says fuck you. Like I, I, I ah. Ah, the vault. I mean, I guess the one counterpoint is the vault is one of the strongest things keeping the public library system alive. 
Sure, because then people just go and rent Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> but yeah, I just always hated that so much. But it's almost like there's a pattern there. Mm-hmm. Pattern. That and IPAs. I'm in a holy war right now on IPAs on my Facebook wall. <laughs> you are. I need to start a different holy war, though. Yeah. Speaking of artificial scarcity, did you go down to McDonald's yesterday and get your garbage sauce packet? I did not. I did not bother. People drove down from, like, Canada, didn't they? Like, I saw things online where people drove, like, six Wait, hours. What happened yesterday? McDonald's, like, certain select McDonald's had, like, a 20. very limited supply, yeah. like, 20 sauce packets each. Of There were, like, a half dozen different flavors, and each of these McDonald's had, like, one of the flavors. And if you went down there, you could get a sauce packet, and then, like, one person would get a poster um, in theory, in reality, like none of them got any of it. And well, so it the employees took stuff, and right now the average price on eBay for a single po- sauce packet is one hundred and sixty-one dollars. Yeah, as of right but before this podcast, one of the flavors was Szechuan sauce. So the yeah. Rick and Morty fans were out in in, in you know, droves. Droves. Yeah, fuck that fandom. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great show with a terrible fandom. That fandom is yeah. so terrible, I refuse to watch it. Yeah, it really, I mean, it was it was a kind of like a really nice underground hit, and then suddenly everybody in the world has to like it. Well, the thing it's is... Just, it's fine, you can like what you like, but it's just... Well, they're... it's not the liking it. What it is, is it, it suffers from the same thing Breaking Bad does, where you have this terrible splinter group of fans who think the main character, because they're the main character, must be a hero, and they are represented as a good person. Mm. And so all these morons think that Rick is to be idolized as opposed to being a monster. Yeah, correct, correct, yeah. yeah. It's like, no, you're missing he's, the point. He's the drunken, abusive Doc Brown. Oh, but he's the smart atheist who tells everybody how, how oh. it is. And I knew, because you could cringe, because there was he, Rick gave a speech this season where he told somebody, you're not evil, you're just smart, and smart people function differently than other people do, and blah, 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 blah. And... In the show, it's quite obvious that he's wrong and terrible, but I just knew the fan base <laughs> would be like, ah, It's funny, too, because they tend to be like MRA, you know, like shitty red pill taking, uh, you know, it's alt- alt-right morons. Yeah, Reddit, whatever. But what's fucking hilarious is that, like, R- Rick is, if nothing else, he's pansexual, provably in the show. Correct. Like, he fucks <laughs> men, women, and giraffes. <laughs> like, and, and planets. And, yeah, well, an entire planet. Well, not, not the planet itself. No, okay, good. He never fucked a planet. <clears throat> he did fuck an entire civilization. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But, yeah it's just yeah. terrible people. So I do need to talk. So non Euclidean and Nick saying don't deny the show just because the fans are awful. I have watched enough of it to know I don't particularly enjoy the show anyways, but the fan base sealed it for me. Sure. Because they made it so awful that I'm not even willing to power through it. Uh, I mean, the, the pilot episode is the weakest episode. But even just right after that, episode two has the dogs, the lawnmower dogs. There are great moments in season one that I did enjoy. But it's just, I don't know. That's fine. I'll just hate you forever. <laughs> but in fairness, I do that to everyone. So yeah, you're okay. I mean, and I am a you know third level hipster, so... <laughs> Fucking IPAs, though. God. Yeah, I want to. I want to taste. I want to taste like uh, pine needles and shit. That's yeah. what I want in my beer. Do you want to drink gin? Well, yeah. No, I don't want to drink I, gin. I, I, it's the worst. Oh. I, I like. Do like. Whiskeys. What if you mix gin and IPAs? Uh, uh, uh. No. Why do I feel like we need to call Jim and ask him what he thinks of that? He, he hates IPAs. He's on for that, but he does like gin for some reason. Yeah. Well, that that's I mean he's he's like he's like the he's like the Spock of our group. He's half hip hipster. <laughs> <laughs> he's half hipster and half half normal. And so you know there there are times when that that you know that Vulcan half will pop out and yeah, you'd be like, oh God, I can't I can't talk to you now. Yeah. And other times you're like, hey, you're fun to hang around with. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I will never forget the time Brian walked in and went. I just realized Jim is a hipster. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, he hates popular things. He drinks uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got the stupid facial hair. Mm-hmm. Well, full-on hipster. I haven't seen Jim in forever. Yeah, well, we're just, we were watching the pay-per-view last night for UFC. Oh, yeah, I wasn't invited. 
you. Oh. <laughs> you were trying to come up with something, but there was nothing there. Nothing at all. I'm sorry. Nothing Just at all. chili. I didn't know if you... Do you like watching UFC, then? I've watched it with you before. Okay. <laughs> but you know that's well, okay. I, I, Damn some it. people like to pander it's for me. genius. Gin IPAs make a fuckload of money. Oh, or the water down some pine salt. No, no. Same thing. The, <laughs> the selling gin IPAs to dumb hipsters. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. So, I need to call every- Brian. This is probably the best idea since the scam pack. Yeah. And I won't get fired from my job for this one. Jim also really likes alternate beers, though, too. So, and I think that's it. <coughs> Damn it. <laughs> What's going on? But that's the problem with IPAs. I wouldn't mind IPAs, except that 99% of craft brewery beers are just IPAs because they're easy to make and people will drink them even though they taste like shit. Yeah, they, they trick them ironically. It's like, I'm drinking a... a, a a craft beer, and therefore I have taste. The, therefore, I'm, I'm killing all the taste in my mouth. Yeah, because I'm drinking this thing full of liquid needles. Well, it's like the uh, fucking. I don't, and and this is the analogy I use on my Facebook wall is when you when you go out to eat with somebody and you go and get like you know curry or, or Mexican mm-hmm. food or something like that, and they put just a gallon of raw ghost pepper oil on their food. It's like I like it hot. It's like you're not. You're not tasting anything anymore. You're covering up any flavor with this one-note carpet bombing of your flavor buds, and you're not impressing me. You know, you're just—it's terrible. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the the types of alcohol. I just know when I drink it, I like it, and most of the time, if it's an IPA, I do not like it. Um, so I mean, I like ambers and like lagers and. Stuff like that, but IPAs are they're just there's too many out there. Every single fucking company has got ten different IPAs and then one normal beer. IPA stands for I piss ass, says Legionnaires. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, I, I posted an article saying stop liking IPAs, and everybody like commented, commented like I like IPAs, and it's like nobody's denying that you do, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I like putting rusty nails in my toenails. It's so always oh, good. Just pound it in. Yep. Makes me walk great. A lot of people are like, oh, you just don't have the palate to appreciate it. Sure. Good. I, I don't have, have the, the palate, palate to know that I want, don't want to appreciate yeah, correct. it. Correct. Well, it's like, you know, and I, the example I use is like, I don't appreciate cat shit either because it's terrible. <laughs> but I'm sure if I forced myself to eat it over and over and over again, I'd eventually trick my brain Stockholm Syndrome style. And, oh, boy, I sure like cat shit. I like how the clay crunches. Yeah. Oh, it's good. It's, it's musky. That's what I go for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. <laughs> like, dude, stop telling people how to like what they like. I will not. I will. Con- when it comes to food, I will die before I will stop telling people to eat and drink things correctly. Mm-hmm. Stop having your steak fucking well done. Stop mm-hmm. drinking IPAs. Mm-hmm. Just fucking stop this shit. You're doing it wrong. It's not opinion, it's fact. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Table pound. Are you are you excited about uh, about Bethesda's uh, workings of of uh, of Wolfenstein the New Colossal? <laughs> are you are you happy about uh, our our wonderful not Nazis but they're definitely getting upset how Nazis are treated in that game? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not a Nazi, but why are you being so mean to Nazis? Ah, well, first of all, you're a Nazi, <laughs> and second of all, because they're Nazis. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. If you find yourself defending that, then you have an issue. I think this is nicely wrapped up from something I saw earlier today where someone's like, 2016, wow, this is a dumpster fire. 2017, that dumpster fire was well contained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something happened in the last couple minutes of the game because it was Dallas at 24. Yeah. At, or, or something like 24, and then... Uh, it was 24 maybe, to 28, it looks like each team got a touchdown. Yeah. I don't know what order the touchdowns were in. Uh, if Dallas got theirs before we did, that's very exciting and terrifying. Yes, I think yeah. so. Well, good job, us. And by us, I mean... We probably missed the extra field goal. <laughs> <as well. laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's seven points because we were at 28. 20 oh, yeah, so he was at 13 points in the last half. Anyway, Packers won. Yay! And when other fans say us, they're being delusional. The New York Giants won or lost that game. You did not win or lose that game, Mr. Drunk Guy on your couch. But I'm an owner, so I get to say us. Boosh. Life hack. Life hack. <sighs> Oh, just you got really excited for a moment there. I'm doing math. Shit. Well, because my there there were ownerships around in my family, and then my dad died, and I don't know where his went to, and now I don't know where my brothers are. I need to figure this shit out. My other brother is probably trying to subtly build up a majority and push me out of the company. I, th- I think another I- like fifty million shares, and he'll have majority control. So what you're saying <laughs> is you're entitled to. Th- Three blocks of turf next time they re- <laughs> do the stadium. Three blades of grass. <laughs> it was a full-on like yeah. brick of yeah. turf. I remember that from when technically, I was in grade school. Technically, I can show up at the meetings. I'm allowed in the door. That's a mistake. <laughs> yes. Here's my feelings about al dente pasta. <laughs> I don't think at the Packers shareholders meetings they need to know about El Dente Pasta. Everybody always needs to know about El Dente Pasta. Uh, I don't. I, nobody. No. <laughs> Ain't no one have time for that. Just going to start drinking. Congratulations. El Dente Pasta must be a theme. This is the only other time I've seen this reaction from Andy. <laughs> Has been when David starts breaking out the war machine numbers. Oh, yeah. When, yeah yes. Oh, God. So there was so much War Machine talk last week. I had to drink, and that was good. I enjoyed it. I wasn't there last week. Ha-ha. No, you were not. Uh, speaking of being places, uh, did either of you go to Michigan? Or no. is that still going? They it's... left an hour ago. Oh, yeah. okay. I wasn't sure if it was a one-day or two-day nope. thing. So congrats to Keith for winning the solo tournament yesterday. Yep. He was already qualified. Chuck was already qualified for the... So the third place person whose name I can't remember got the W. I, I, mean, War Machine I saw him post. Ticket. I saw that him or somebody else post for him on on the mm-hmm. on the feed. Um, our Madison team, the team tournament today, did not do quite as well. I think Quimby said they went one and two. Mm. Wah, wah. So I haven't heard anything more about it since then. I saw somebody post. This is not related to the the Michigan Cup. Uh, I saw somebody post on. I'm one of the faction forums, stating, I went 2-0 in my tournament today. And on the sheet, it definitely showed he had a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he meant, like, morally. Morally? Yeah. Like, we're all winners in life. Once he lost to go sleep. Well, that doesn't count. Exactly. Hence how he went 2-0. and You just throw out that game because you know you're going to lose it. Yeah, and then you just give yourself an extra win so that the same number of rounds count. That's how I'm undefeated always. Is Ghost Suite still really that big of a thing? I or is it on. just really more of just Denegra? I mean, Denny One has always been a baller caster. But I mean, like, Ghost Fleet with other casters, I mean, is Ghost Fleet really going to be destroying things it, that it's, much? Or it's is it really fine. More so it's just, because of, it has because weaknesses of then. Both? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a strong theme force mm-hmm. with, like he said, with some, you know, weaknesses. And Denny's like, well, let me just get rid of these weaknesses. Yep. And How's this look for you? Yeah. And then you take that formation, you put it with Coven, and then you run into the perfect pair problem that we ran into once or twice in Mark II as well, which there was a right answer for all problems. Well, it's the same thing as Gatsby II and Denny II, Body and Soul, in Mark II. Yeah. Where it was just a perfect answer to everything. Yeah. It has, it has the tools to handle almost all situations. Mm. And that's not a good game state, so I fully expect that to be fixed at some point. If... It'll be interesting to see. There's a few more tricks. The Merc Inclusion, the Scorn theme, uh, Masters of War, and there's a few other things that'll make it harder for Ghost Fleet to be as good. Like The Scorn theme in particular, I think, is going to be pretty good into both Ghost Fleet and Dark Host. But if it doesn't, I can f- see them doing some stuff um, to fix that problem. But... I was a Kirk's player. I've actually, I haven't, Keith actually has all my Ghost Fleet and Dark Host models right now, and I don't even notice. Sure. Because sure. the current list pair I'm practicing, the only thing it shares with them is a pair of Death Rippers. And you can have. Uh, I, I own 10 Death Rippers. Yeah, I'm good. I, I, because I of own my, somebody's Mark I uh, Coven yeah. <laughs> Death Ripper uh, spam list. Yeah. So, you know, there's lots of options. Um, hmm. 
Well, you're running around with Dark Host and uh, the new Carapace one. Actually, I'm right now. I'm playing a Satixis, so a Scourge of the Broken Coast. Oh, okay. With, okay. Uh, with uh, Gatsby one, and then my uh, More Never Two Black Industries list, because the uh, the Scourge list is actually pretty good into Cricks because every model has a magic weapon, and Gatsby one can do terrible things to Ghost Fleet with uh, Hellfires. Fair. Awesome. That was my, uh, was my comeback. Yay! Hey! Right, now back to something. We got. I, I don't really have anything. What? Anyway. <laughs> what? How you got nothing? Packers won. Yay, Packers! We already talked about that though. Oh. We just oh. chatted about it a minute ago. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. All filled with energy. ATC. Yay! We talked I, about that already. I made chili yesterday. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. And it almost killed me. You're an old man now. You can't eat spicy my, chili anymore. No, it wasn't the chili. I think it was the t- tomato sauce. My my stomach cannot handle tomato sauce anymore. So so I had a bunch of that, and then I was up all frickin' night. I could not fall asleep, because the second I laid down, my stomach said, Ow! Uh, Arctic Circle, if I recall correctly, that's Jim Goff. It said... Chat zappity side, and then he corrected with side, not side. I like when people try to correct themselves and use the same word twice. It's adorable. Uh, but yeah, we got like eight people in the chat right now. They should start giving us some questions to talk about. We can we can go full on zappity sewed, mm-hmm. which I'm sure is what he's saying. The one I saw up top already was uh, about Final Fantasy IV, asking my opinion of the remake on the DS. It was about about a decade ago, 2008, so nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the three best Final Fantasies, and you can play it on the bus. What's not what to like? There was uh, a remake of Final yeah. Fantasy three as well for the Nintendo DS or Game Boy Advance. I think it was three. Well, three is not a very good game. Um, I think from four on is when they got pretty good. One's good. Two and three are kind of weak. See, the funny thing is, you mean six? No, I mean four. I mean, I oh, mean, you do mean I three? Mean, I mean actually three. <laughs> Never mind then. Actually three. <laughs> I don't remember that much about 3. I do need to play 3 again and see if it's okay. 2 is the train wreck. Um, 5 is the hidden gem, but I haven't played 3 in, like, forever. Uh, so I do need to check that one out. But, but yeah, no. Uh, uh, for uh, the DS one I like better than the PlayStation uh, ones, when they did, the, like, the Final Fantasy Chronicles CDs that came out for mm-hmm. the PS1. Because the issues with that is, number one, it's hard to take a PlayStation on to the bus or to a convention with you, whereas a DS is nice and pocket-friendly. And number two, because it was CD-based instead of cartridge-based, uh, the load times for battles and stuff like mm-hmm. that were very long. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, we've talked about that before with Final Fantasy Talk. And so having a cartridge-based system that's portable just mm-hmm. makes it worlds mm-hmm. better. You said it was PlayStation 1? Yeah, it was ps Isn't the little mini PS1 with the screen only marginally bigger than a DS or a 3DS? Yeah, but it's not battery-powered. I think you still have to plug it in. Okay, fair. Although you could probably... Battery pack? Yeah, I was going to say, now you might be able to do something with just like a USB cable and clutch mm-hmm. it up, yeah. It could be like the Turbo... Uh, turbo Graphics, uh, the then, Jaguar? Nope, nope, the tur- it's the it's the just handheld it Turbo Turbo Graphics. I cannot remember the name of the system, but it had it, had, it used batteries, but yeah. it used batteries like no one's business. Like, yeah. you pop in the Lynx? four AA batteries. No, that was at the Tari's. Four AA They had the batteries. Jaguar, and then they had the Lynx. It was the... I know, because that, that just made me remember Todd's Adventures in Slime World was one of the games that was out for that that I played a bunch. Yeah, but yeah, you would go through a 16-pack of batteries in a weekend. Well, not even a weekend, probably like a few, like eight hours. Yeah. Oh, man. What was that system called? But that was actually really cool because that was playing games that came directly from your system. Right. Because, uh, yeah. Which is probably why it chugged batteries so hardcore is because they were very powerful games, so they needed a powerful, you know, system. That's bugging me. I won't look it up. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> Have fun with that. Goodbye, Arby's Cup. <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, any Final Fantasy. But yeah, no. And then they fixed some plot issues. You know, they fixed the translation. I, th- I'm not sure if in fixing the translation, th- there are some things that shouldn't be fixed. Like you, Spoony Bard, will always be a great insult to yell at somebody. And so don't fix that, I hope. I haven't I don't remember if they, they fixed that translation if he still calls the guy Spoony. 
Yeah. That's my feeling in Final Fantasy oh, IV. Turbo Express. DS. I have no opinion. Turbo Express. Turbo Express, that's what it was. I have a Turbo Duo downstairs. Cool. Yeah. No. Do you have an SNES Classic? Nope. No. Because he's here and not in line. Switches are supposedly coming off of uh, the endangered species list. Yeah. Uh, you see, see a lot more posts on that. Just in time to get Darkest Dungeon on your Switch. No. Darkest Dungeon's coming off of the Switch. Uh, I have, yeah, I, it is. Not, I'm not, not going to play it. That's fine. It's still coming Did out. Did you see the uh, the the Road Rash remake? No. You didn't see that? I saw that you posted. I didn't bother watching it. You didn't? No. Nope. Oh, you don't like my stuff anymore? No, I don't. I don't know. Is this Road Rash is that like a racing game? It, it kind of. I mean. Does it have the soundtrack to go uh, with it? It's got like metal music playing in it. Okay. Yeah, at least in the trailer. No, oh, well, metal sucks. Is it accidentally an amazing soundtrack like the original Road Rash was? I. It seems like it. It looks. It looks really cool. I, I figured. I figured you saw it because Jim. <laughs> Jim Sterling. Jim Sterling uh, had uh, posted a, a video of him playing it, and he plays. He's very bad at it. So. Talbeast just triggered me. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a it's a dungeon that's dark that you send people into and people will die and then you get money to make better Not people. That's good. And well, they, and it's then, all good because Nathan's going to be glued to his computer for the next twenty hours so I can go steal some more board games out of his basement. Yay! I need to start packing up all my board games. Why why do you need to pack up all your board games? Because we might be when our lease is up next June, we might move, and I don't want to. He needs to start. Now. Like if I pack stuff now, I can pack like a box a day for six months and then be all packed. As opposed to needing to pack it all like two weeks before I move. Or overnight. You're going to pack into two it. Two weeks before you move. And then he's going to put it all in a storage shed in Mazelvania. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Hopefully not. The Where problem you- is there's no reason for me not to start, pack- start packing right now because I can't access any of my stuff anyway because all the kids' shit is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so I can just pack my stuff and leave it in the dark corner where I can't use it anyway. And- Easy peasy. I go downstairs and I look at the nice big table I bought to board game on, and I look at all the other people's shit covering the table and under the table and blocking access to the table anyway, and I cry. A little inside, but you don't let other people show it. Or you, don't, you don't show it to other people. No, down there, I do the one, I do the, the, the Indian <laughs> commercial thing. Oh. <laughs> The one tier just go now. When I look at the six inch walkway from my staircase to the laundry room and back amongst all the hoarder boxes from like seven kids. Well, I, it's. I, there's like th- six people's worth of shit in my basement right now. You have like a one person shit basement. Yeah, maybe one and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Somebody needs to put their hammer down. <sighs> yeah, I'm too nice. <laughs> I'm too nice. Well, not moving. If I like, I'm not moving elsewhere. Like, I'm moving to like. Well, I mean, elsewhere, but not like different county elsewhere. So you could have been my neighbors over here. I guess the question is: Are you moving further into the ghetto, or are you moving on up? I would be moving on up <laughs> to the east side. Yeah, that was hit by a tornado yesterday. Yeah, tornado. Yeah, it's a false flag operation. No, oh. it's an insurance scam. Trump oh. Trump sent FBI agents to spin around <laughs> punching things wearing tornado costumes. Oh. <laughs> if it was a tornado, where was all the debris? It was... ah. Do you not know how tornadoes work? Nah, see? If it was a tornado, people could have just put a belt around a pipe mm-hmm. and been fine. I saw that documentary with uh, Bill, Bill Paxton. Paxton. No, Bill Pullman. Come on. Bill Pullman. I couldn't. Rem- I honestly couldn't remember who it was, so I guessed randomly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to talk about uh, uh, our Lord and Savior Alex false. Jones and those type of things. <laughs> oh, fucking a. Oh, oh my God. I Nothing s- wants to trigger me more. Yeah, you see it on Facebook. Like, I saw somebody post some insane ramblings on Facebook. Somebody else was like, I mean, he does have some good points, but he's wrong on a few of the details. Like, no, he doesn't have good points. It's just fucking wrong. (sighs) Something horrible happened. It doesn't have to be a fucking conspiracy. Everything's a conspiracy. Oh, my fucking God. Yeah. (laughs) Yup. Fucking A. I I have a good friend that I... 
that uh, I, I'm still friends with, but uh, he's the type of person that believe believe and told everybody for the longest time that the Chinese are going to invade. Sure. I mean, I saw that episode of South Park. It yeah, seemed reasonable. They're, they're going to invade. They're going to invade. And then, uh, then I see his girlfriend, and she's basically posting all the same fucking wacky bullshit that he is, too. It, it's, uh, it's painful. Yeah. It's Somebody... painful. I, I went to the button that, that went to unfollow... You know, but not block because I, you know, I don't. Yeah, I'm but nice you thought about way. it. But but then I thought like, nope, I want to be annoyed later on when I see them post some <laughs> other fucking bullshit. So yeah, I didn't I didn't hit the button. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> non Euclidean Nick has a gift for you, Andy. He's gonna red belt the shit out of you. <laughs> Nothing but trouble. Well, it's too bad we're not going to have any videos at uh, War Machine Weekend. No, actually, War Machine Weekend uh, Painting Lounge. Yeah, I say put it on the Painting Lounge. We have... <laughs> especially, that, they'll be on it. Um, we have a crazy amount of people for, for the Painting Lounge uh, this year. We have uh, both privateer painters, Dallas and Brendan Roy. Uh, we have Joshi Bauer. We have Lauren Fahey of Griffin Roo Studios. We have Pirate Monkey Studios uh, with Anthony Rodriguez. Uh, I probably mispronounced it there. Somehow. Yeah, it's but Bender. Hmm? It's Bender. Yeah. It's Bender. What? what? Bender. Is what? Bender Bending Rodriguez. This is his full name. Oh. He was made in Mexico. Four years ago. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> Eric Swinson, who's an amazing artist as well, and Chris Siri, all teaching classes for the for the show. In the first episode, when Bender puts his left arm on with his right arm, and then puts his right arm on with his left arm, and then it zooms out, and you don't see the physics of how that happened, is one of my favorite jokes ever. It's such a brilliant visual gag. I don't watch Futurama as much as I should. Well, it's I fine. Feel like I, I you feel can't like... see those first four seasons. Actually, they cut out the movies too. So, yeah, I saw. I I watched all of, all of the episodes of it, but I. It's not something not where enough. It's I haven't watched them enough to commit them to memory. Um, but I do have this the fucking we're sailors on the moon song stuck in my head once in a while. We're whalers on whalers the moon. On the moon. Yeah. We carry a harpoon. But there ain't no whales, so we tell tall tales and sing our whaling tune. Man, this sucks. <laughs> Please direct all complaints to the Monsanto <laughs> company. Yeah. I do, like, how many how many seasons were there in the original run before the movies? Was that four or five? Five. Well, it's five. I always right. think it's four. Okay. Because seasons three, uh, season five... four, and season five all have, like, series final things because they weren't sure they were going to get renewed. Sure. I thought five was basically the starts of the movies. No, that's six. Because six was the four movies on Netflix, and now Netflix has not... se- series seven through 11. I'm not going to pretend like I know more. Point is, the original run was the strongest, and then the movies were okay, and then it came back and was, I mean, hit and miss. Peaks and, yeah, peaks and valleys. Peaks and valleys, hit and miss, yeah. I mean, it was still decent, but... Not the pure I, brilliance. The first five seasons I can just put on, and I did many times, just put on season one, episode one, and just watch it all the way to the first movie and come to like a day and a half later. Sure. I can't do that with the last four seasons. I was just, you know, it's one of those things where the later things feels like somebody trying to pair, like trying to imitate themselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They tried, especially like season seven, I think they tried to do a little bit of the South Park thing and do too many timely relevant jokes yeah and no one can do that like south park does because nobody has a lead time like south park does yeah that's true yeah well and you know fucking although a. they at least didn't try and go down the family guy route which was let's do south park but on broadcast television family guy fuck you family guy uh no i, I like Family Guy's okay. I'm mostly just mad that Kristen uh, Schaal didn't get uh, uh, an Emmy for best performance. Bob's Burgers? No, uh, for season or season three, episode 11 of BoJack Horseman. That's too much, man, uh, was her magnum opus as a voiced actress. It was amazing performance. Hmm. Um, and uh, 
Arctic Circle. She Are lost you thinking of to... Hermady- I mean, uh, Hermes or Barbados Slim? Probably he's thinking of Hermes. But, um... Uh, fucking... What's the guy with the family guy? The, the guy. Peter Griffin? No, well, yes, but... <laughs> Seth MacFarlane? Yes. Seth MacFarlane got the Emmy for just generic family guy performance number 752. Oh, really? Instead of Kristen Schaal getting it for... Did you watch season three of BoJack at all, or...? Um, I haven't. It, it's okay. It's, never mind then. I won't spoil the episode. But the point is, the episode focuses on the, her character. Is it the penultimate episode again? Of course it is. So okay. of course it's an emotionally <laughs> draining episode with an amazing performance. Sure. And she lost a generic Family Guy. Yeah. And fucking Fry's. Hey, guess what, Jim? Fry's dog episode isn't heartbreaking because no artist can leave well enough alone. So they undid that and ruined it entirely. What? Dog didn't die. Dog's fine. Hooray, dog. You remember the dog episode in Fu- Futurama mm-hmm. where the dog mm-hmm. dies and it's heartbreaking and they just cut to credits and you're like, you sons of bitches and everybody cried about it. Well, in one of the movies, it turns out he's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, well, why, why have emotional depth? Futurama. Why have emotional depth when you can just shit all over your own the mythos? Movies don't count. Yeah. The, the movies are they're basically... I think that two- was the movie that was all time travel based, so they rewrote history like three times anyways. Yes. So I think they fixed that by the end of it, but it was still dumb. No, they just had a second. Fr- like Fry goes back in time. Like mm-hmm. so, oh, the dog the lives Wars out the rest plot, of his. Yeah, the dog lives re- out the rest yeah. of his life with Fry. Oh. Yeah, yes, that whole thing. Yes, which thankfully was never mentioned again. Yes, yeah, so the, like, yeah, yeah. The, I don't think they the actually mentioned Principal the movies Skinner. after the series restarted either, because the movies weren't really. There. There's a few references to Wild Greed and Yonder in the beginning of season seven, and that's it. No way too much about that show that I do. <laughs> Watch the show. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's very good. I mean, <laughs> it's on my playing computer games playlist for Monitor Two. A Monitor Two, yeah. <laughs> Mine is Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> we all show. third so best daytime judge. We all make mistakes. I've got such a backlog. I've got like twenty hours worth of uh, People's Court to watch. Oh, oh. You, you, well, People's Court. You were saying Judge Judy. No, no, I've, I've been. I've been You're working. caught up on Judge Judy, so you've yeah, fallen saving, behind on your Marilyn Million. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I've, I'm saving the best for last. That's what I'm doing. God, I love Marilyn Million. She's yeah, sexy, sassy, sassy. Yeah, yeah. Zappity. <laughs> Grum- grumble, I guess. We've been like 40 minutes into this. We're Yay! I'm <laughs> stumbling through this podcast. I don't know what's going on. So it's normal crippled system? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you wanted a non-War Machine ramble episode. So this is well, what we're we giving you. we talked about some War Machine a little bit. We talked yeah. about like some you, Kirk's theme stuff. We're getting a normal yeah. crippled system episode. Five Technic- minutes of War Machine, a bunch of event announcements, and then random crap. We legally can still refer to this as a War Machine podcast. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, you know, I, play, I played some War Machine the other day, too. <laughs> Not so secretly, Nick. Uh, somebody asked when our Crippled System D&D th- campaign is going to start. Have you tried to schedule anything with this group? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the, actually the biggest thing is, is scheduling. Um, I can barely scrounge up enough folks to run the podcast right now. You should scroll up and look for the painting question. I remember seeing, uh, seeing Arctic Serp oh, right about here. painting. Oh, how do you guys feel about sketch style painting, non-metallic metals in painting, and all the other fancy painting styles? I can't and he asked story. me to share what I was referencing. Oh, belt and pipe equals pull. A twister, the movie Twister, I assume. Unless I was referencing something else, but this was you hours ago. Twister. Yeah, that was, that was with, uh, with Bill we, Pullman. You were ruining my little Or the man false jokes. flag. Yeah. Maybe he was asking what I was referencing as far as bringing up the concept of false flags. Uh, <sighs> Like I said, you did ruin kind of my lizard right man here, joke by bringing in Twister, but I'm sorry. I know so it was wrong of me. Sketch style no, it painting. Wasn't. <laughs> I guess I should probably say happy birthday, Matt. Matt DePietro. He's our. He's it's his birthday today, and I think he helped at least bring about sketch style painting into into light. It's interesting. I don't know where. Oh, Nathan's going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's okay. Which one is sketch style? Is that the like almost cell shading type thing? It's kind of glazing in okay. a sense. Basically, you're you're painting the model in black and white, and then you're kind of glazing it over with colors. Oh, I did that for a uh, uh, Imperial Guard Army once without knowing that's what it was called. Yeah, it was I, actually it was fun to do for a small set of models, but I would not want to do it for a big grouping of things. It's, I mean, the way Matt does it, it looks it looks amazing. Mm-hmm. The way it looks. Um, 
folks that don't have that much practice in it, unfortunately, it does not look as amazing. Um, so get more practice. Yeah, get more practice with it. Uh, sketch style is fine. It's, I mean, if, if, any way that you feel will produce a nice looking model on the table, that's that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I personally non-metallic metals are overrated. I hate non-metallic metals. It's it's one of those things where uh, it has to you have to master it, otherwise it looks like fucking shit. In my in my opinion, um, well, that's because all to, people who question me metals are metallic. Why why don't you just use metallic metals? Uh, What's the point of doing non-metallic metals? Snobbery. So like, but what does it do? So you're painting it without actually using any metal flakes or anything. You're just building up. It, so you're artificially adding light into your paint. Mm -hmm. So you have... Light problem light one light. is people who do it often forget where their light source is coming from. So there's random shiny bits all over the place in such a way that would never work. Why, why, why non-metallic metal? Because like, what advantage does it bring to the table? It's kind of like elitism. A, it, it's it's like a hipsterish <laughs> painting oh, tool. A, yeah, for a while it, it just, was all the rage on the, like the painting competition thing because yeah. it showed that you obviously were a better painter. It's the same reason why they still frown on airbrushes. It's because it's easier to do and therefore mm -hmm. it's a better entry. It's removing or, a barrier to entry. Therefore, we must hate it. Or using dipping method too. I mean, mm -hmm. dipping method is it is incredibly easy to do. And produces produces pretty decent results. Correct. But you could take that even a step further, and then add more highlights and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and take that to an even better level. So apart from being harder mm -hmm. and saving me the five dollars of buying a pot of paint that's the metallic. Oh metal, no, no, you don't save money because you need like fifteen, twenty layers. Yeah, you, you need. Yeah. You need. So apart from being, so it's harder and it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. But like legitimately, apart from just saying I did something the harder way, it has zero appearance advantages. It, it looks so if it's if, if it's, it's done, done right, well, if it's done by you know, if you have mastered and honed that art, it does look really good. Better than just painting it with metallic metal. Yes, uh, yes. Some, okay. Some, sometimes it does. It, it has it makes a, it more so, of a, an actual like comic book or cartoon mm -hmm. feel to it. Normal uh, metallics, for the most part, do have a skill cap. After, you can only do so much with them because of how they work, whereas non-metallic metal, metals, you can go a lot harder. non including Nick also brings up the point of it does use a lot of classical painting techniques because you do, for especially oil paints, you do do a lot of the same tricks. <laughs> you said doo-doo. <laughs> like poop from your butt. Shut up, Nick. Okay. Why, why, why are you Nick? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he was telling non Euclidean Nick to shut up. All right, well, fine. Now that I understand that it's a completely pointless waste of time, you guys can talk about non-metallic metal more. No, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. It's, it's I mean, I just, I... I don't for, think it, it the finish is worth the effort. Correct. And, and like I said, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be, you know, grandmaster at it to make it really work. Yeah, um, the learning curve is really hard. Like I said, you have to have a perfect understanding of how light I mean, your light source is coming in on your models, which also makes it a terrible tabletop medium. Correct, because you're also looking at the model from a very specific uh, standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, looking at it this way, and it's only painted to really look good from this angle. Right. So, so if you're looking at it from different angles, it, it's mainly built for display pieces is really what it's mm -hmm. built for. So it's terrible and dumb. It's the IPA of painting. <laughs> mm, I wouldn't go that far. Only snobs <laughs> like it. <laughs> but, they, but but uh, but IPAs you can are easy to make. Yeah, say, <laughs> and you don't have to wear flannel to do it. <laughs> it can't hurt. Yeah, I mean that that's just only a couple opinions for for both those methods. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you know, airbrushes do, solve do all painting makes problems. You happy when the, when you finish that model? Like I hate paint. That's wh that's how I paint. Is I I slap on a coat of base coat on it, and I hate the model. And I slap a coat of wash over the base coat, and I hate. And then do another base coat over the top of the wash and base coat, and I still hate it. Hate. I hate paint it until it's got like second to last highlight, and then I love it. <laughs> I do all that except the last part or the first part or any of it. <laughs> I mean. Do you still have Raylene paint all your stuff? 
or you you got caught up? So well, no, the point. Well, yeah. So I got caught up pretty well, and then I bought a bunch more stuff, so I'm not caught up anymore. Um, and then I lost all surfaces in my house, <laughs> so it's hard to paint right now. I mean, that just sounds like you have a lot of drop cloth. Yeah, that's true. Just oh, look, you left all this laundry here. Well, fuck you. It's a painting table now. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. I just use an airbrush for my stuff. I'm I'm always worried about uh, dust from from airbrushes. Uh, of again, I mean, do I? You know, I don't wear a mask. I look fine. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. But, uh, yeah, we could probably go into some Zappity Grumbles and some people who got some chats in there. Um, somebody is asking, uh, which is more important game plan in 2017? Attrition, scenario, or assassination? I don't play War Machine. <laughs> I mean, from what I've seen... I mean, if you play properly, the three of them should be hand in hand. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You need to threaten assassination. Mm-hmm to force engagement so that you can attrition them down to the point where you win on scenario. Mm -hmm. That's how the, the, circle, the cycle is designed to work. Yep. It's definitely leaning towards scenario. I mean, I've beaten people with cav lists where I just shut... I had an example of the last tournament I played in where David let me go first with two units of cav, and I just locked him out of zones and let him kill my army slowly while I won. And I didn't even care. Speaking of units of cav, it occurred to me yesterday... That with the death of the press gang, Hungerford could no longer answer my I'm going to do this thing, would it be okay, with his standard comeback of you can do whatever you want your last day as a press ganger, and I think I'm going to do my unit of cavalry. Nice. I'm nice. excited about that. Yeah, I got, I got how, many, how many hills are you going to have? Three. It's a three-man three three unit of cavalry. Okay, all right. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. I yeah. look forward to it. I look forward to putting it on Facebook and, and, and seeing the fights. And the balance between good senses of humor and bad taste. And people with both neither or either. Mostly Very neither. True. I think you have both, though. So I'd be excited for your response to my unit of Calvary. Yes, which is why you won't see it on Facebook. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I'm smart enough to understand how job searches work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But I'm smart enough not to care, or yeah, dumb enough not a, to care. Well, for the most part, you work in an industry where that's not death to your application. Correct. Um, so somebody's asking in chat about uh, thoughts on the new Blindwater CID that's happening right now. Um, I think the only person here that would have any insight on that would be Nathan, but... They nerfed, uh, they nerfed um, uh, Jaga Jaga's new feet. The feat they gave her was insane. Was insane, <laughs> so it rightfully needed to be toned down. Sure, uh, I don't even know what it was. Her uh, feat original was feet. D three plus five or D three plus D three plus some five. number. Yeah, three three plus five of scars, sack bombs. <laughs> yeah, that weren't limited to warriors. <laughs> that's going boom, 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 and eight things and like a say you could sack sack a sacro vault and just have that. You could yeah, or eight 20. blind walkers or yeah, blind walkers with their armor twenty. Yeah. You <laughs> know, with signs importance. Yeah. So and I think they were boostable too. Yeah, they were. No, they were boostable, but but I think they auto hit though. Yes, yeah, they, they auto just, hit. You know, they were yeah. just the like auto hit how twenty. Yeah, is, so is they, horrendous. They were scars bombs, mm -hmm. and yeah. she got like D three plus four, D three plus five, some number of them. Uh, so that's pretty fucking sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, the nerf was uh, a target can only be targeted once <laughs> during oh, the feat because okay. it would just eight right into somebody's caster. <laughs> sure, just like, sure. Take that, fucking nuts! <laughs> they took that away from them. Yeah, uh, Rick has been playing him. He's been happy with him so far. I and think. now he's having back surgery. Now he's having back surgery. Uh, and I'm the freaking... Uh, I'm ex I, I like pretty much everything I've seen in the CID. The, the, um, the squid. Fucking A. Swamp Horror. Yeah. The Swamp Horror has four-inch reach now, mm -hmm. which is great with pull. And then somebody's like, oh, there's elasticity should give plus two inches instead of giving two-inch reach. It's like, shut up. <laughs> you need six-inch reach on something with pull. No. And overtake. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm actually selling a bunch of my minions. But Man, that, that, that so. four-inch reach with pull kind of... No, never mind, it doesn't. My bad. Ignore me. Ignore me! I was going to suggest something illegal. That's, that's a illegal. show that needs to start producing more fucking episodes again. Venture Brothers? God damn it. That's a good show. It hasn't been... Has uh, it been three years yet? 
Uh, they had something out last year. I think they had. So a you have another year. year to wait. It's been like 15 yeah. years, and we've gotten four seasons done. You know, that's good pace. Yeah. Good pace. Oh. So their television is George R. R. Martin. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. pretty much. Is there a video of the producers of that rolling around in a giant hamster ball? No. no. There's a video of George R. R. Martin riding around in a hamster ball. I think so. I think that'd, that'd be him. amazing. <laughs> I want to see that. One of these times, I'll send it to Brian. Um, all right. So somebody was going to ask, or Legionnaires that had asked me if I was going to have the podcast uh, cluster fuck a palooza at War Machine Weekend this year. Um, probably not. Probably not. Uh, the the big issue with the cluster fuck a palooza is getting everybody there to bring their stuff and record. And then post it. Yeah, the and then bringing stuff it. and recording happens quite easily. Yeah. It's when we bring stuff and record it, and two of the five podcasts actually post it, then Correct. what's the point? Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a great idea. It's uh, also finding the place to record it in. The uh, last couple of years, we've, we've had to go do it in like either the game hall, I would think it was. Uh, and that's, it just doesn't make it very... Well, it's also tricky getting the right group of people who are in the right mood to be humorous and funny and maybe a little edgy and not just be cool Kurt the year that he got plastered and was and literally tried to sexually assault me yes that was that was great <laughs> he thought he uh, was being funny mm-hmm. yeah so like i said there's that fine line <laughs> and, and by the time we can record it usually that line has been crossed several times yeah uh, it would be f- it, i would i would not mind doing it if we had like a like a small like a conference room we can kick a bunch of uh, high school-aged uh, uh, sports teams out of? Yep. You just I, have to have a control, you know, 16 people, you know, four tables of four. You know, it has to, ironically, it, it can't be chaos. You know, that's the ironic thing about it is that it needs to actually be well executed, um, which we did a decent job the first year. You know, we had a plan mm-hmm. about when everybody moved. We, you know, had one person in charge of making sure it happened and it went pretty well. Uh, and then, then it went downhill. I, I think yeah. it was also the the reason why it worked the first couple of years uh, for that is we had a pretty good rapport with the other fo- podcasts. Mm-hmm. We I don't know many of the other ones outside of Muse and Chain Attack. I mean, I I know or I know Learn to Game or mm-hmm. Learn to War Game. Um, I know them, but I I don't really know much of the other guys. I don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I don't have a desk job. Yeah. I can't. It's. I find it difficult to even. There's a lot ours. of them with questionable quality or content uh, quality. Audio quality. Or, yeah, audio quality. It's hard to find a podcast that both understands how to do audio production and understands content. Like Scrumcast is a great example where they have the bad Skype audio problem and routinely get basic rules wrong. No. Oh. Well, we get rules wrong all the time. Yes, but you understand audio quality. No, uh, well, kind of. Maybe comparatively speaking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I mean that, that's something maybe we'll throw in a throw in a hat for maybe sometime during the summer or something like that. We could have like a like a muse on con or something like that. Considering that's where most of the podcasts have a hub at, that may be something we'd want to do at like muse on con rather than War Machine Weekend. Fair, I think that would work. Considering, like I said, most people are releasing their podcasts through Muse. Zappity. Zappity, crumble. Um, somebody's asking about the Orville. Well, not the Orville, but... Uh, well, no, it's up a bit. That's the follow-up. Oh, yeah. First, uh, you skipped what movie trilogy would make a great anime and what anime can America actually make into live action without it being terrible. I heard, and, and this might not be a popular opinion, I heard that if you didn't know about anything about Ghosts in a Shell, Ghosts in a Shell is a pretty decent movie. I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it either. <laughs> so... Um, I want to see a live-action Yuro Tsukidoji, Legend of the Overfiend. No. And anybody who gets that reference should be ashamed of themselves. I, I feel ashamed. I had a Yuro Tsukidoji t-shirt, and I wore it proudly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it hid what it was. It said Yuro Tsukidoji, and it had, like, the werewolf-looking guy with, like, the blue glow coming from sure. below the screen. But yeah. just on the shirt, you didn't know what was glowing or why or what was yeah. going on. So it's just this cool werewolf guy and a gibberish word. Yeah, I saw it at, like, a Spencer's gift when I was, like, 16, and I bought the fuck out of that shirt and wore it all the time because it was hilarious to me. I told you about my friend who put that in for his family, right? 
his fa- his his family had a, he had a uh, family reunion at his house for Easter. I'm assuming this is some sort of Japanese. Uh, the thing oh. is, you. Can, <laughs> this is an interesting sentence, but if you took out all of the dicks, it's actually got an interesting plot to it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, my friend, during during Easter, I'll stand by that. <laughs> I won't right say how out. he got I need the that tape for a soundbite. I won't say how he got the tape, but uh, he he's he was going to show anime tape? to his grandmother, and popped in Legend of the Overfiend. Sure, and that that thing doesn't start off like light at all. That starts off with just full on yeah, well, machines and demons. And the very first scene is. It's because there's like a hell dimension and a heaven dimension correct, and then correct. earth, and the first shots are things being raped until they explode in, in hell. hell yes <laughs> like that's how the movie starts yeah and it ends with a five dicked godzilla carpet bombing tokyo with its jizz correct so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know if you if you take out all the dicks because the actual the, the the gist of the plot the mcguffin the jizz is, of the plot the jizz of the plot <laughs> does it, it fit in a bucket <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, it would not. That yeah, would no. Th- you would need many buckets, even Jason's bucket. Uh, you would need you would need more than more than uh, Mr. Jizz Bucket himself. Mm-hmm. Reference to episode yeah. seven of yep. the Triple Was that seven? I was yeah. so long ago. We were yet children. We're coming up on five years as well for doing a podcast. Fuck me. Five years. We were, but we not continuously. At the time. I mean, we're not. You know. 250 some episodes total runtime like 500 hours so like two how do days work (laughs) Uh, (laughs) roughly three weeks of straight listening yeah yay we we almost have enough content to be used as a torture device (laughs) is that the cutoff is it's three weeks of solid audio i mean it works for noriega fair enough good old pineapple face (laughs) Why are you being mean to Manuel? <laughs> Why am I being mean to Manuel? <laughs> because I, he's dead. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> I mean to all dead people. Take yeah, that, yeah. Princess Die. <laughs> all right. I had to uh, think of the nicest dead person I could think of. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Zappity. Okay. Oh, I didn't even get the answer. Well, go ahead. No, you said Zappy. Go so ahead. I will say no, Rumble. Go ahead. And no. I only answered half of the question. No, I, you know, I was just done with it. <laughs> oh, fair <laughs> enough. Next question. So, I, 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 so I, which question is what movie trilogy <laughs> would make a great anime? <laughs> oh, I had the other question I was going to answer. <laughs> so answer that one. I was going to say Americans. We can, let's do the Robotech trilogy because we already screwed it up. Yeah. It's called Pacific Rim. Speaking of which, the music in that trailer is terrible. Oh, it's so fucking horrible. I saw I saw somebody post, they're like, yeah, this is a great thing. Music sucks. I'm like, ah, it can't be that bad. Yeah, and bad. then I watched it, and I'm like, yeah, it's that bad. And it's, the thing is, it's not just that we're like dumb white people and we don't like hip-hop or whatever, because I love the music in the Black Panther trailer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. It just doesn't fit the trailer, the Pacific Rim one. It does. They just took a song and put it on a trailer, and it doesn't mesh. I wonder if you'd remix it if it would make you more excited, and then put a different soundtrack on. Yeah, it. probably. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It looks interesting. I mean, I'm I'm intrigued by it. On mute, the trailer looked great. Evil Jaegers, what's up with that? <gasps> you know, there's, there's interesting stuff there. Some kind of possibly Robeast style. Well, not even just Robeast, like some kind of organic Voltron. Because, mm-hmm. like, you see a kaiju and it looks like multiple kaijus are, like, forming together, Voltron style. That seems interesting. I hope to God that the Jaegers don't form a Voltron themselves. Fuck you! I Fuck you! I, 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 Why are you hoping against the greatest thing? I, I don't know. he doesn't want to sit through the soundtrack. I, yeah, that's very true. There's, there's some really awesome movies out there that have the worst fucking soundtracks in the world. Uh, there's the the one with uh, the gal that was old MMA fighter. Yeah, Ronda yep. Rousey. No, it's not Ronda Rousey. She was also in American Gladiators. Uh, 
uh, John Boyega. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naming people. <laughs> Ever play Earth Defense Force? It's uh, like a, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Earth Defense Force with the giant ants and everything. Yeah, because yeah. there's a maneuver you could do where you take one of your giant robots and you stand it on the shoulder of somebody else's giant robot and you fight together. And that's amazing because <laughs> they don't like lock together or anything. You just balance on the guy's back. So it's like playing a um, not not a game of chicken. What's that called when you it's do that? Chicken. When you're no, in chickens, pool? when you run towards each other, and then you know, I only no, know no. if it is pool. I, 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 I always called it chicken, and when it was in the pool, is it just chicken though. Yeah. The point is, Earth Defense Force is amazing. It There's... actually has button inputs to make the other people sing the Earth Defense Force correct, theme song. Correct. Yeah. I, I watched uh, Funhouse has got a really entertaining series where they do the Earth Defense Force. Uh, it's fairly entertaining with them. All right. Um, what else? You know, now on? I do need to look up if there's a techno or like hip-hop remix of Wreck of the Evan Fitzgerald. Ah. <laughs> uh, wow, this is getting so fucking internet. But yes, because on YTMND.com, which well, is a relic that oh. I, I fucking loved YTMND.com, there was like a month where the meme du jour was the, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, and there were techno remixes of it. 100% guarantee. I remember that. They would also, like, it, like, it was the equivalent of the Rick roll. Like, it would start mm -hmm. with something, switch to the Fitzgerald. Nice. Yeah, I'm on a big music as a different genre kick right now, so. Well, chicken fight. So it's not just chicken, it's chicken fight. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I yeah. knew there was more to it, but chicken was right, and so it was confusing me. <laughs> yeah, I just remember calling it chicken fighting, or yeah. chicken. So I guess the Justice League trailer popped, too, and I didn't watch it because I don't give a shit about that. Uh, hey. Did you hear that they, they killed the, the DCEU? Did they? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they killed it. So well, they didn't they quite didn't, kill it. They're they, splitting it off. So there's still going to be an occasional Justice League tie-in movie, but most of them are going to be like Wonder Woman, who, what was the quote? Something to the effect of, we realized how much better these were when they could stand on their own merits. Sure, yeah. So, so just, they're not going to try anymore. Well, the, the odd part, though, is Wonder Woman does tie into the previous one. It can't. It's about a woman. If you No, it does, it does tie into it because it goes, it goes with her... It, basically, all they would have to do is if take you, the shot from Batman v Superman, where Batman's looking at the, at the picture of of Wonder Woman with all of her World War One buddies, going, and is her just, name Martha, and then just slowly slowly fade into that picture, and then just insert Wonder Woman movie there, and then cut back out and into Batman v Superman. It's it it ties in. But the flip side, yes, it ties in. But if you show up to Wonder Woman two minutes late and you leave two minutes before the end of the movie, it has nothing to do with anything else in the DC Extended Universe. True, true. The framing device, you're right. It, it, it fits, and it's not shoehorned. Like, they use the framing device of the photo. I, you're 100% right about that. But without that, it could completely stand on its own. Yeah, it doesn't true. have like plot melding into it. Yeah, like, like this is not a, a Marvel movie where there's you have to watch six of them to understand the next Avengers. But you can balance it. Like, look at the um, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. They are technically Marvel extended cinematic universe. They have Infinity Stones in them, but who cares? But who cares, right? Like, they're one hundred percent on their own merit. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just enough there where you know, come Infinity War, they go, "Oh, look, here's the things, and we're together, and now piss off again." Yeah. And it's so, like, look, random group cameo, move on. Yeah. And so they just need to, if they could balance that. But I mean, it was always a clusterfuck because they were trying to do what Marvel did in a decade, a decade in two years, and that shit doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, and especially if you have like, if you're juggling directors and writers all the time too. Well, plus, all the main DC universe characters are boring. Please tell me at least that the Universal Studios Dark Universe Extended Universe Universe is still. The Dooku is, I think, is dead. I think that's dead on arrival. I mean, yeah, not the Dooku. Got cut off. The Dooku is the DC universe. No, no, no. Oh, is it, it dark cinematic? Dark cinematic. Excuse you. Universal Studios, dark universe, cinematic universe. Yeah, it's the Dooku. That's 
But you Inoko? need to you need to always the say dark, the whole thing so that you can universal. be aware that their official fucking name has six words, fifty percent of which are the word universe. Mm-hmm. I'll be completely honest. I'm still not sure what you guys are talking about. The Universal Studios Dark Universe Cinematic Universe? It's the Dark Universal Studios. No. It's the Universal Studios Dark Universe Cinematic Universe. The fucking... The Mummy and... and you know, the I was mummy. going to make a Judean People's Front mo- reference, but this almost <laughs> works. <laughs> are you going to keep the fetus in a box? Anyway, um... Well, obviously the aqueducts. Of course the aqueducts. Uh, anyway, no, so the new Tom Hanks mummy movie, <laughs> and it had the guy as Mr. Grumpy Grumpy Gills. I mean, if that was Tom Hanks, that would have been better. Yeah, it's Tom Hanks and, and, the, the, and the chick with no legs from Kingsman, and, and um, the master and commander guy as the guy that's grumpy all the time. And then they're going to make more of them because they're trying to do it even faster than DC did it. It's, I think it's called... Cause they it's call the it Universal <laughs> Studios Dark Universe Cinematic Universe. I, I don't think they have the Universal Studios at the beginning of it. They call it the Dark Universe Cinematic Universe. Right, by Universal Studios. <laughs> yes, but that's where the Dooku comes in place. <laughs> Dooku we were already it. over this. Dooku got his head cut off. He's dead. That's true. That's probably like one of the coolest sequences where somebody dies in, in uh, Star Wars. I, I like how, how Dooku actually bites it in there. Did you guys just mention the, that a the, second ago, too? Yes. Yeah, the best okay. part of that is Dooku's glance at Palpatine when he realizes what's going down. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. Yeah. But no, the Mummy movie that just came out. The terrible one? Yes. So, <laughs> Universal <laughs> Studios... <laughs> anyway we're referencing a thing uh there's a very exciting sequence where like a plane is spinning and he's flying around and whatever and for like how do you do that i don't know if it's on accident or somebody either on accident or somebody working on it was grumpy and did it on purpose but they uploaded it with no adr so it's just him with silence except for him just going ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and it's amazing <laughs> uh but anyway yeah it was the mummy movie and originally this is the third time they've started this fucking thing I, over I, I don't think uh uh frankenstein is p- was part of it because that's a different company entirely but the werewolf was the wolfman rather with wolfman uh, was long with benicio del toro yeah that was that going was, to be that was a while i know ago. but that oh. was going to be a start and they gave up on it because you if you look at when that came out it was way back when marvel started doing this it was about 2005 right yeah and so they Iron they were one. gonna do that and then they gave up and then they did the dracula should have never been told and <laughs> Dra- that was come terrible. on come on give it give it its props it's dracula untold should have remained untold no, it's dracula untold <laughs> that movie's great sure anyway so that was gonna start it was that and that was fl- terrible like the bad flying vampires no, it was the one where his wife falls like 1,200 feet onto jagged rocks and is mildly annoyed by it and then just randomly dies once he gets there. Yeah, she falls on jagged rocks Jagged rocks and is able to hold a, a general conversation with her husband. Uh, yeah, and, and also he's a vampire who's able to summon clouds at will. To block out the sun. Yeah. So, so much for that weakness. <laughs> but that was going to be the start of it, but it tanked, so they decided that wasn't the start of it. I thought I, Frankenstein, was supposed to be part of it as well, uh, but you say not, and I don't care enough to dispute that point. So then the mummy's supposed to be the start of it, but that didn't do very well, but it's going to make enough overseas that they'll probably just bully through anyway. But the the next one is going to be Bride of Frankenstein. Yep. Not Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and they're going to do Jekyll and Hyde because I already set him up, and then they're going to do Frankenstein. Like They're, they're just fuck up. Fucked and, up. And- Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. Yeah. What? Yeah. No. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. If you're going to do the Invisible Man, you get some guy off the street for 15 bucks. Or you hire a voice actor who knows how to do performance where you can't see them and can get across. Holy shit, get fucking Andy Mark Selkis. Hamill. <laughs> Andy Selkis or Mark <laughs> Hamill. There's your star power and someone who's amazing at uh, voice acting. Just the Invisible Man with the Joker voice? I'd see that movie. What are you looking up? Are you looking up by Frankenstein? 
I was just, I was, I was looking at I Frankenstein, and I, I looked at it for a second. Oh no, I guess I, I misread <laughs> the the star review that was on there. I thought mm-hmm. it said seven seven point oh out of ten, and I'm like. No way, that's not right. The point seven out of ten? <laughs> no, it's five point one out of ten. Oh. Well, and that's low for IMDb. I think you can't go below five unless you are a direct to Netflix shitty horror film filmed in on literally a handheld camera. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's on. Actually, the the entire Dooku is on the same level as the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It's 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 just that bad where they have a car chase in venice which has mm-hmm. no roads mm-hmm. that leads to a cemetery in venice which mm-hmm. has no cemeteries mm-hmm. it's a good set piece right before mm-hmm. they sink all of venice at least that is kind of a thing that's true <laughs> but the roads and the cemetery it's like i don't think you understand how a city made entirely out of boat systems would work <laughs> yes we could do a new league of extraordinary gentlemen but i can't think of any actors that we need to end their careers on do you know why he did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Yeah, because he turned down Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Lord of the Rings and something else. Like something... Although, he was, I actually Matrix. think... Matrix. Yeah. He was going to be Morpheus. They offered Morpheus to Sean Connery, and he turned it down. They offered him Gandalf, and he turned it down. Which would have been, I think, actually bad, but... Whether it would have been bad or not, <laughs> the point is, is Sean Connery's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And so he's upset about it. And so then the very next nerdy thing that hit his table, he's like, this looks nerdy. Yes. And, and he, then it <laughs> ended his career. <laughs> it's amazing. Second best career ending movie to welcome to Mooseport. Mm. Who did that kill off? Uh, um, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman. That movie was so terrible, he's just like, I'm done. <laughs> I miss Gene Hackman. I, I just watched uh, Unforgiven a couple months ago. Fucking amazing film. Fucking amazing film. And Gene Hackman is fucking amazing in it. So, uh, Gene Hackman makes uh, an incredibly awesome villain. Duck, I says, is one of my favorite lines. Hmm. I'm just going to sit here and stare at a picture of Gene Hackman. Ah, well, wistfully. You're like that meme with Wolverine and the pi- the, <laughs> the picture frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it, we checked this before, but... Oh, he stopped at exactly 100. 100 movies? 100 movies. Maybe that was it, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Welcome to the Sport was 13 years ago. I have seen pictures of Gene Hackman, what he's supposed to look like now. Ray Romano's done stuff since Welcome to Moose. Oh, yeah. He did the Ice Age movies and stuff. Yeah. God, get your shit out of my chat, I mean, they're Jim. still churning those out, and, and they must be paying well enough because he's still doing them. <laughs> or he's got nothing else. I mean, you've got to make your mortgage payments. Yup. Ralph and May died recently, too. Huh? Comedian. Really? Yep. He died uh, two days ago, I think. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Which was really weird because I just got done watching a episode of Penn and Teller uh, show us. Or Fool, Fool us. us. Fool Us. So, which he was, he did a, like a little guest star on it. Fool Us is an interesting show. I like it. I do too. Yep. Um, yeah, he's, he's, in Get, he's, uh, the, he's on Get Shorty the TV series. Ray Romano. Oh, hey. I I'm Ray Romano. Why do you sound like you're number 20? <laughs> is it not 24? Is it? Because he sounds like Ray Romano. Yeah, tw- 21. No, tw- Hedgeman 21 is is the normal. Hey, hey, yeah. I don't get it. And the other guy is like this. Somebody in Madison has sent the multiverse for like twelve dollars. I saw it on uh, Facebook's net marketplace thing. I was Sell like, "Oh, that's neat," and then I kept scrolling. Selling multi, s- yeah. Sales? <laughs> Every once in a while, I go on the board, the uh, Facebook marketplace, and just search for board games. So what you're saying is you actually go in there and you don't just click on it by accident? Yeah, I keep on seeing a notification for it. I'm like, "Oh, I need to." St- ah, fuck. <laughs> it's almost as annoying as Facebook Messenger. Now I keep getting p- random calls from people. Because they keep hitting the call button while closing their phone. Yeah. I actually uh, called called uh, Dan yesterday during the pay-per-view. It was great. Did you get the voicemail message? Because it said it was recording a voicemail message. I accidentally <laughs> called Jeremy Shea at like 4.30 in the morning two days ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. You're not sorry. Not really. 
Alright, I think we should probably call it there. My <laughs> recommendations, Linda! <laughs> that wasn't Ray Romano, that was me. That was just I know you can't tell the difference. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not sure why he's like <laughs> half drunk, too. <laughs> All right, uh, recommendations. Do we have any? I don't really have any. Uh, one is uh, if you find yourself being sick from tomato sauce, you shouldn't eat a lot of tomato sauce. Andy, you're selling us on this bowl of chili really yeah, well. Yeah, you want you're like, hey, you guys want some of this leftover stuff that nearly killed me? I, I mean, I, I'm still debating that. I haven't heard from Jim. I'll still take it. <laughs> I haven't heard from Jim. So or, the other guy who ate it, you haven't heard from since. I haven't heard from <laughs> so Jim or dead. Jordan. They're both dead. They're, they're probably dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Brian would have told me today. They're like, I found Jordan dead. No, he wouldn't. Oh. Not until he, like the paycheck stops showing up and he actually has to care. He might, might not even notice. Yeah, <laughs> Jordan yeah, just he's got plays XCOM in there for you know hours at a time. Uh, my recommendation is to play some more Grand Theft Auto. It's goddamn fun. Play, I, get some friends and play some. Uh, what? By what? What's a gird? Gird. <laughs> Yeah, hit my gird. Oh my gird. Oh my gird. Oh my gird. Chiller. What? Apparently, you've been smoten by the South. Gird. He took my gird. Took it here. I was very happy to see that return to uh, South Park recently. The two gurds. Which set off everybody's Alexa as well. <laughs> Did you see that episode yet? Yeah. Oh, it was it was basically about Alexa and all the all the other things there. I haven't watched. And so that in a so while. they ended up hiring up uh, rednecks to be the place of an Alexa in their room. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it was uh, it was great. No, I I don't think I have it, but we'll find out. Hey, look! He managed to type "sewed" by mistake, so he <laughs> typoed the thing he tried to type earlier. That's glorious. <laughs> That's full circle. That's professional chatting. <laughs> My recommendation is a board game called Romance of the Three Kingdoms Redux. Although I always pronounced R-E-D-U-X redo, but all the reviews and videos I watched, they said Redux. So maybe I think that's wrong. It's Redo. I think so too, but whatever. Because otherwise, redux. why would you call it Part Do? But that has that's like D E A O U another no, E D for no reason X like D E U X sure but this is R R E and then just D U X there's not another E after the D that's the whatever the point is it's spelled Redux and the videos I watched pronounced that and I was angry and assumed they were wrong but after the fourth video I'm like well maybe I'm wrong but either way fuck it point is Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Redux. R e d u x. Romance of the Three Redux. Kingdoms with ducks. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> what? Anyway, it is a three-player worker placement game. It is fucking amazing. I bought it on a whim. I was in uh, Pegasus Games, and it was on the wall. And Romance of the Three Kingdoms era. Three Kingdoms era China is my favorite historical period by far. I fucking love it. I've read the full Romance of the Three Kingdoms, abridged and unabridged, like a dozen times each. Love it, love it, love it. Play all the Dynasty Warrior games, Romance of the Three Kingdoms games, Destiny of an Emperor for the NES was my first RPG. Love it. Uh, so I bought it just... Well, I saw that I'm like, uh, I can't buy a $60 board game just because I love the fluff. And so I looked it up and it was 8.1 on fucking Board Game Geek, which is like mm -hmm. the second highest thing I've ever seen. And so I bought it and I finally got two other people to play it and it was a blast. I recommend it heavily. It is a worker placer mint slash auction like you you take turns mm -hmm. placing a worker but your workers have value so instead of just claiming a space like if you go someplace i can also go there sure. and so the workers are like little mini auctions as well um and then you trigger the areas and shit happens and it's great uh multiple paths of victory like you can go heavy one way or another there's like eight different victory point scoring categories um and very tight scores and looking at the session reports online the three um uh, kingdoms have like a 36, 33, 33, or 36, 32, 32 win percentage. So it's really well balanced. And the game I played, we saw that. Like we were all three within like three points of each other at the end, and we all had a chance to win it on the last round. Um, so if you like worker placement games, 
and you have two other people who would be willing to sit down and play a it, the the only downside is it is like a three to five hour game it is an epic length worker placement game which there aren't a lot of but mm. on the other hand there aren't a lot of epic length games that work at three player um but i i fucking heavily recommend it like mm. if i had two roommates i would play it with them every single day for the rest of my life it was amazing well you have you have like all of your roommates and stuff stuff at your place. That's true. If yeah, if could, I had you could, people you could, who played board games that lived in my house, you could take piles of the piles of the stuff that people have left behind and construct roommates. That's true. Like and just eventually they'll start, yeah. and they will start moving around after a little bit. Well, Romance of the Three Kingdoms Redux is on uh, tabletop simulator on Steam. Mm. So uh, you know, that's a thing. You you lost me at work replacement. <laughs> Work replacement? Yeah. Auctions? No, I, I can do auctions. Yeah. I, I'd be interested in trying it out, um, but I will be grumpy through most of it, and then everyone will hate me. <laughs> One really interesting mechanic is that, so the center of the board has, um, like, 12 spaces that you bid on that do stuff. You know, mm-hmm. get get gold, get, you know, get resources, buy weapons, stuff like that, get armies, trade armies. Get good. Yeah. Get good scrub. But then... Um, each, there are in between each of the three players there's battlefields and you could put oh that's another place to bid and you can if you win a battle you can take that general who who are your workers mm-hmm. and you can station them in like a border province and then they get you victory points every single turn which is okay. where the bulk of your victory points come from but they're there now forever so you have permanently reduced your bidding strength for the rest of the game so there's this interesting balance between this victory point uh, economy gathering, gathering, gathering so versus having the bidding early, strength. But then you run yeah. out of steam. Yeah, and you have to like pay those armies, so you still need your other general. Now it's even harder for the more people you have out there. Number one, you have fewer workers gathering resources, and number two, you need more resources, and so you have to make sure not to overextend. Uh, so it's this b- delicate balancing act, which is really cool. Hmm. I, I fucking loved it. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Yeah, I saw you. I saw you were playing that with uh, Brian and the Shays. Yeah, uh, or just Jeremy because it's Jeremy. only three players, so it's Brian yeah. and Jeremy. Dan, it's too good to play it with me. Man, my toe hurts. I'll go play War Machine instead. Is that your recommendation? Is don't kick uh, laundry baskets? I mean, that's one of them. <laughs> I'm finally back in shoes for the first time in three weeks. <laughs> I'm not wearing shoes. I'm not wearing At this shoes. point, I don't want to be wearing a shoe. But. Fair. Because uh, I'm tight. Yes. My actual recommendation is Total Warhammer 2. It's very enjoyable. It's got Skavens. It does. Lizard although, rats. I'm not actually a fan of the Skaven, although I need to try Pestilence. Well, I don't know about in the game, but in general, yeah. I'm a fan of the Skaven. Mm-hmm. Lizardmen are fun. But. I, so I heard a thing from the designers saying that they made up, they, they added shitty dinosaurs because they knew Lizardmen players would want to play with dinosaurs and they didn't want them to have to wait until they oh, got yeah. elite troops. Yeah, there are, so they put shitty dinosaurs yeah, there. there are shitty dinosaurs. Yeah. And then you get really good dinosaurs. But that's cool. They're like, people want dinosaurs. We'll throw some shitty low-level dinosaurs in there so you don't have to wait until your elite troops show up. Yep. So yeah, it's fun. I have played every race so far. Like I said, Skaven, I haven't figured out how to make work yet. One of the things they added is every race has a unique currency that they have to maintain of some sort, and Skaven's is food. And the game I played so far, I just ran out of food, and then everything went to shit. But you figured it'd be weird stone for them. Well, there's that one too, which is for the victory condition. But they also just need it. They need to maintain food stocks to just keep going. Sure, sure, it makes sense. So yeah. I like I like the man that that world is mm-hmm. is beautiful. It's it's so sad. It's not being utilized for anything other than a video game right now. Yeah. But well, I'm happy that it's it's living being on in the video game, yeah. living on in this world. Well, and honestly, I think for as much as I played fantasy battles, I'm enjoying this more because you have the ability to do things that you couldn't easily do on a tabletop with it. True, true. But it'll be even be- Total Warhammer Two will be even better when they bring out the full Mortal World map and you can play everything. Mm. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, my computer cannot handle it. Otherwise, I would probably be playing that too. Because I was a big Warhammer fantasy. Uh, you're supposed fanatic. to be playing Tales from the Borderlands, you son of a bitch. No, I don't want Brian up back on the podcast. All right, fair enough. Brian said he didn't want to come on the podcast anyway. So, I mean, there was a period in that sentence. Yeah. He wants. He doesn't want to come back on the podcast. Period. He wants you to play Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. Well, I thought it's just he doesn't want to come back on the podcast. Period. 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, that, <laughs> that <laughs> also is a completely <laughs> true way I've interpreted yeah. that. That's how I interpret it. Also, that. it really bugs me that there are four shuttles on there and only one of them in the movie. Well, I mean, there's other shuttles. I mean, the one shuttle, there's... I assume that there's more than one going to Floss in Paradise. No, only one. It's an exclusive resort. Yeah, Is but it? not everybody on the resort comes from Earth, Only the probably. people who mattered. Wow. Wow. Am I wrong? And, and what is that thing over there? That's one of the battle cruisers from the beginning. What? From what? From the eggshell robot guys. No, 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 no. Theirs were like these big, long, lumpy things. No, no, I'm talking about the, the human the Earth, battle cruisers yeah. who shoot and then the get orb up. and then get blown up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, there's they're... no Mondo show and ships on there at all. Yeah. Oh, well. Good old fifth element. That was amazing audio. And he's just going to stare at the fifth element poster some more. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Who would have believed that fucking Gary Oldman is Winston Churchill? Jesus fucking Christ. And yet people shit themselves over DiCaprio not having an Oscar. Fuck you, the internet. <sighs> they're they're going to force Gary Oldman to stop making fucking movies and then feel like they did to uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. What? Daniel Day-Lewis is not making movies anymore. Did he done. almost kill himself in the last role he did? He's done. He's not making more movies. Yeah, but who forced him to stop? What? Who basically people. I don't know. Somebody did. The lizard okay. people. It's, 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 oh, yeah. The, the Alex Jones. Jones. Is this another false flag? Yeah, Alex, yes. Jones, <laughs> Alex Jones made Daniel Day-Lewis stop making movies. Yes. You heard it first here on Curbled System. Yeah. No, but uh, fuck. I, I was just sitting there thinking about it because, you know, I saw the, the, the trailer for the new, uh, is it Darkest Day or what is it? Darkest Dungeon? No, not Darkest Dungeon. The, the Green Lantern. Darkest Day and Lightest Night. Beware, Red Lantern's <gasps> light. What? What's going on? My wife's calling me is going on, but then she didn't. Um, no, the the one with with uh, where he was Winston Churchill. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. But I, it got me thinking. Dunkirk? Like, no, it's not no, Dunkirk. It's a different one. Inglorious Bastards? No, it's not the Glorious Bastards. But it got me thinking. It's like, wouldn't it be fucking amazing if we actually had Gary Oldman and Daniel Day-Lewis in the same film? One of them would die from out, trying to outperform the other. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to see that? I mean, seriously. Oh, uh, Jim said it's called Tower Hour. I don't think that's what he's trying that's, to say, but it says Tower that's Hour. That's not. <laughs> it's that's Darkest not, Hour. He was correcting your day to Tower, so it's Darkest <laughs> Tower. Oh. Hour. Oh. Darkest Tower Hour. Isn't that a that's Stephen the King book. Well, it's it's the uh, Darkest variety Soul. show. It's the variety show based on the Stephen King book. So all the like villains from the Stephen King universe come and juggle and sing on the Darkest Tower Hour. <laughs> Pennywise dances. Uh, speaking of Pennywise, uh, Bozo the Clown died too. Oh, the guy who played Bozo the Clown died recently. Well, you can just say Bozo the Clown. He had no real name anymore at this point. Cookie died like a while ago. Yeah, he did. He died a long yeah, time yeah, ago. A while ago. Yeah. The, yeah, the is Wizzo who... still around? Did he die? I mean, there can only be one. I think Wizzo is dead, too. Doody, 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 do. <laughs> How many people grew up in Chicago and watched <laughs> freaking. I, I, it turns out I, I, thought he was, I thought he was in Chicago. He was not in Chicago. He was in Arkansas. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where Bozo the Clown actually centered at. I always thought it was Chicago. <laughs> But it was in Arkansas. Hmm. I just remember when they had a big vote and and no, I thought because I thought like the mayor of Chicago was on there one day and 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 made him let Cookie lead the grand parade at the end. The glorious and honorable Richard M. Daly. Yes. Uh, widespread franchising in early television. <laughs> there were a lot of bozos apparently. It appears that there was a few bozos. <laughs> so, not unlike Congress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right we should probably end it right there holy cow all right thanks guys for watching thanks for listening and and uh we'll, we'll catch we're you. sorry go pack we'll go yeah the packers one yeah i love my shirt i got this at shop go on clearance for like two dollars that shirt's amazing we'll remember you brent <laughs> we'll never forget <laughs> you brent <sighs>